Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. Today, you guys, I'm gonna take you through a series of my favorite exercises to help build the glutes. Now, we talk about building the glutes and great movements, and some people having a really hard time actually working the butt when they do these exercises. Now, if I take you through these exercises and you still struggle to feel it in your butt, make sure you guys refer to probably our number one video right now, which is how to build a butt. That video will actually teach you how to turn your glutes on so you feel it in all the exercises I'm gonna take you through. Sumo deadlift is by far one of my favorite moves to teach people. The reason why it's one of my favorite moves to teach somebody is the position that you have to get in stance-wise forces people to turn on to their side butt. Your side butt, I refer to that so it's easy for people to understand what it is. It's just your glute med. It's a part of your butt. It's one of the three parts of your butt that tend to be turned off for a lot of people because they don't move laterally very much as we start to get older or in the transverse plane, which starts to incorporate that. That muscle is responsible for externally rotating the femur. So that's where we, when you get in a stance like this, where you open up. So we're gonna start off with talking about posture and foot position first, and then we'll, we'll move for there. So when I walk up to the bar, I'm a pretty tall guy. So I get a really wide stance. So I line myself up the same place where I'd kind of bench press from because I'm a tall six foot three guy. Now your stance is going to depend on the person. If you're a much shorter person, your stance is going to be kind of in a little bit. The most important part is actually the external rotation of the feet. So the feet coming out that when I turn the feet out, that's the part that's going to turn on that side butt, that the glute med. And so how far you want to open up will also depend on your hip mobility. So if it's painful for you to open up, then I would tell you to reference our 90, 90 video and address your hip mobility. Because if you lack the mobility to open up the feet already, then this may not be for you. Reference that video, work on hip mobility first, but we should be in a position where I can open up my stance. Okay. I'm not quite opened all the way up right here. This is going to be really rough for a lot of people. I just want to be externally rotated a little bit. That, that much being opened up is already going to start to turn on that side butt. So when you walk up to the bar, I want to get my shins as close as I can in the bar without actually touching the bar. We want to keep the weight closest. The further the weight gets away from us, the more at risk we are of hurting our low back or pulling something. I want to keep that weight close so you have a lot of power when you pick up. So I want my shins almost touching the bar. The feet are opened up. And then when I go down to pick up the bar, here's a big mistake a lot of people make. People bend over, they round the back to grab, grab the bar. They also are unsure of where they grab. Do I grab in really close or do I go really wide? Think about this. If my feet are open or my, my hips are open all the way up here and my shoulders, okay, I can reach down with normal grab right here. So if my hands are hanging right by my side. I'm going to go straight down. If I grab in really close, it's gonna be off, off kilter a little bit. If I grab really wide, I'm gonna lose some power. So I wanna be straight down from my shoulder. So I just come down, I grab. Now, when I go to get into position, I wanna break at the hips. So instead of rounding at the back to grab the bar, I think you're taking like a karate chop right here and you break at the hips. Also, another cue that I give is sticking the butt out. Now, some people don't like the cue sticking the butt out because then people have an excessive arch in their low back but we're trying to get the point across instead of rounding at the back, you're hinging at the hips. So karate chop here, break at the hips. So I, I slide back. The moment I start to slide back, you should already start to feel this stretch in the hamstrings. That's when you know you're hinging back correctly. And then I come straight down to get a hold of that bar. Now, before we pull, I want a good grip on the bar. I want to make sure that my knees are opened up. The feet are opened up, externally rotated, and then I want to sit upright. So I sit back on the heels, the chest is up. I should feel tension in my hamstrings. I should feel tension in my glutes. And then I want to feel tension in my arms and my back. The way we do that is we call it, you take slack out of the bar. So I kind of pull on it just a little bit. I'm not pulling really hard. I just want to pull on it so I can feel my arms and my shoulders tight. I want that stiff and rigid before I go, go to pull up. And then the last thing that we do is we brace with the core. So I tighten the abs and then I come up, <sighs> breathe out, decelerate by sliding the hips back, setting all the way down, reset, go through my cues again. I want to make sure that my knees are opened up. That's another thing. My knees are going to want to collapse. So I want to push those out. I want the hips up just a little bit to where I can feel the hamstrings are tight. The glutes are tight, slack out of the bar. I feel my arms are tight, my back is tight, and I brace. 
and then I thrust forward. I don't want to arch the back. I want to thrust the pelvis forward, squeezing the butt. This is a very complex movement with a lot of cues. I highly recommend resetting every single rep and taking your time. Uh, I'm not a big fan of a, a touch and go deadlift, which is when you see people do this, they get in their position, they lift and they touch and go. Now, if you're an experienced lifter, that's completely fine because you've got the mechanics down. I don't like teaching a touch and go to somebody who's trying to learn this movement because there are so many cues that you need to run through. Obviously, we've been going through this video already, and this is one of our longer videos because it's one of the more complex movements. So I like to reset after every single rep and go through your checklist of taking the slack out, sliding the hips back, making sure there's tension in the hamstrings, tension in the glutes, tension in your core, and going through that before you pull up. So also bracing, we wanna brace with our abs, our core really tight, and that's part of your breathing technique. You actually kind of hold your breath right before you pull up. So I'm gonna get in the position, into my deadlift position, get all that tension, and then before I pull, I take a deep breath, and what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my abs, almost if like I'm trying to fart. That's what it feels like where you're trying to push out and you'll feel you create tension with your abs. You're basically creating an artificial weight belt. You're tightening up that core around your spine and supporting it before you hinge up. This is really, really important. So right before I go in, I get in, I go through all my checkpoint, I hinged at the hips, I got tension, I take the slack out of the bar, the chest is up, and the last cue is I brace that core. So I tighten the abs and then I breathe out as I come up. I reset, take my time, get a good grip, get tension back on the hamstrings and the glutes, the chest is up, last cue, I get that brace the core, and I breathe out as I come up. Reset, go through my checkpoints, take the slack out of the bar, abs tight, breathe out as I come up. All right, now let's talk about how you know you're doing this exercise right or how you know you're doing this exercise wrong. Well, first of all, you know you're doing this movement right if you feel this primarily in your butt and your hamstrings. This is definitely a posterior chain workout or exercise, even though we're getting down kind of in the squat position. So it's not wrong if you do feel some in your quads, but the prime mover should be the butt and the hamstrings. And if you're having a hard time with that, again, reference the video where we teach you how to turn the glutes on. It could be some issue that you have a breakdown in the hinging of the hips and activating the glutes to do that movement. So another way you know you're doing this exercise wrong if you're feeling more of this in your back and your shoulders, okay? If that's the case, common mistake is the rounding of your posture and the slack in your arms. That's a very common one when people get down in this deadlift position and they go to pull up, there's a lot of slack here and they're not, there's not tension in the back and tension in the arms. These are supposed to be locked out, straight and tight. They're just work, you're just working like a lever right here. You're not pulling this weight when you come up. So if you're feeling in the arms, in the shoulders and in the back, you're probably pulling up on the bar and you're not in a fixed rigid position like you should be. This should be all in the hips. This is a power hip movement from hinging so that we wanna focus all on the glutes driving you through. Another mistake I see people make is when they go from, the, from that position and they come forward, they over arch because people think that, oh, that's locking out, it's the arch. You don't wanna arch and feel it in your low back. It's all in the hips, it's the thrusting the hips forward. So as I come through with the pelvis, I squeeze the butt and just press the pelvis forward. It's not in the arching of the back. So it's a common mistake you see too, is when people go to the lockout position, they lock out and they lean back. Don't lock out and lean back. Now we're getting your low back involved. All you wanna do is when you come into the lockout position is squeeze the pelvis forward and you should really feel that in the butt. Okay, another really common mistake when doing this exercise, and this is probably one of the number one mistakes that people make and why they don't feel it in their glutes is when they actually go to pick the bar up, the knee will have a tendency to collapse in. This is what makes it so good for building that side butt, for getting that glute meat is because you're having to focus on keeping the knees out. You focusing on keeping the knees out as you drive up is what's going to activate that glute meat. So when you come down and you go to do your lift, 
pay attention to your knees. You should already be thinking about keeping the knees open because naturally, as you come in, they're gonna wanna collapse in to get you up. And then what that does is it shuts off that glute med. We wanna activate that, we wanna incorporate that glute med when you drive through the heels. So when you're down in that position, pay attention to your knees, keep the knees open as you drive up, keep them opened up, that's gonna activate the glute med through this movement. So we've addressed a lot of cues in the lower body and we haven't really talked a lot about the upper body. Now, this is where I love to use a stick, a dowel bar, a cheap PVC pipe, just something that's about three, four feet long at least that I can take and I can put it down the back of my spine because when I go into that hinge movement that we talk about, this is difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people lose this ability to hinge at the hips and they end up bending over and rounding at the back. So what this does is I have three points of contact to my back of my head, my upper back and my low back or my hips are all gonna be points of contact on the stick. And I should be able to get down into the deadlift position and still maintain all those points of contact. So if I don't have a friend with me, I can actually hold this in, in all those points. So imagine I'm getting in my sumo deadlift position. I have those points of contact and I wanna take my time getting down into my set position. So that's about as deep as I need to be to grab the bar, if I were to grab the bar, and I have my points of contact. This teaches somebody how to keep their chest upright, their head neutral, their spine neutral, and that's your starting position where you wanna pull from. So if you don't have a friend, you can do that yourself, just like I was showing you where you grab the stick and you keep those points of contact, and then you hinge back at the hips as you bend at the knee, so you keep those points of contact in that position. If you've got somebody working with you, it's really nice to have somebody while you're doing the deadlift, keep those points of contact, and then you start with a really light weight. So, and we can talk about weight since we're addressing this right now. When you first start off, I recommend a really light weight just to learn the mechanics. Now, the unfortunate part about doing a really light weight with the deadlift, it's also really challenging to really work it out the way you want to, really attack that central nervous system and really feel it in the glutes like you want to. You want the entire body to have to fire and work to pull this up. And if it's really light, sometimes people actually struggle with the form. So you want it to be a little challenging. The goal would be to at least to get to your body weight. Most people should be able to, if they've been deadlifting for a while, to pull two and some people three times their body weight. So that's why it's such a great exercise to build a muscle like the glute since that's the primary mover here. But when you start off, I recommend a really lightweight. Most of my female clients, when we start off, I normally teach it with a 80 to a 90 pound bar or with just the 10 kilograms on each side to start them off with their form. With my guys, most of my guys can start off with about 135 pounds to start them off and teach them mechanics and then I progress. Now that's obviously gonna be very based off of you and your strength and your levels of lifting, how long you've been doing this for. But I highly recommend getting a stick or a cheap PVC pipe at Home Depot, put it against your back, especially if you're just learning how to squat and deadlift, because this works great also for squatting. All right, now hopefully you guys are off and running and deadlifting with good form now. Now, as far as how often you should do the sumo deadlift. Now, when I uh, program this for clients, there's not a wrong or a right way to do this. Although I highly recommend that you only deadlift about one time for one time for one time per week because it's a highly taxing exercise on your entire body. And then I like to rotate between a sumo and a conventional deadlift. And the way I do that for most of my programs that I design for people is I'll run them through a sumo deadlift program with four to six weeks where they're actually doing the sumo deadlift. And then we'll rotate back to a conventional deadlift the following four to six weeks. And we kind of ping pong back and forth because both movements are great for you. There's a little bit of a variance. This one definitely targets the glutes more. And let me know if this helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, just leave them below in the comments. We'll be visiting the YouTube channel periodically and answering your questions. Also, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys subscribe and share. Also, turn on your notifications. We are dropping videos almost every other day on here. And then also, if you guys want more points along the line of building a butt, we have a free guide. Just click the link at the end.